The World Test Championship is here. Australia up against India. And I can't wait to watch this and react and analyze each day's play here going into it. It starts tomorrow, guys, at 7.30 p.m. in Australia, which is very exciting. We should be able to catch at least the first session in a bit, depending on how late you go to bed. So very, very excited for that, as I said. We're going to get into my general thoughts on who should win this matchup. And we're going to go through a lot of the Indian players today. So if you didn't catch, I went through the Aussie guys and how they go in England. And I'm going to be going through the Indian guys and how we can exploit them in this game or how I think we can and, you know, potentially how it will go uh, and who needs to step up for India and also who's going to step up for Australia against India. Because obviously in the same place that we're speaking about, obviously the conditions in England there, but, you know, things change from team to team and who has, you know, the wood, the wood over some players and, and who can uh, who score really well. Uh, or, or bowl really well against the others. So so the most exciting thing here for Australia is that we get this, not warm-up game, but it is a, a obviously really, really important one, but it's going to give us a great chance to see how we play in the conditions in, in England. There's obviously been a few of the guys, Smitty, Marnus, definitely been you know, out, over there playing, you know, batting and doing good things in, in county cricket, but it's going to give us a chance to have that warm-up game to get ready for the Ashes, which is clearly the most important part for, for all of Australians. But, uh, you know, the cricketing world, it's it's the best uh, spectacle in, in Test Match cricket. But we did see a couple of years ago when you know, India came up against England, uh, India came up against New Zealand, I should say, in the in that final, and it was a, a beautiful uh, display of cricket. So one test, can't wait to, to talk through this one with you. But let's just go through the general squad that we're going to see from the from the Indians in this one and generally where where it should uh, where it should roll out but the big thing here is it should be Sharma as captain again with Shubman Gill is probably going to be the other opener there which uh you know it says here in this one it should be those two um is the way it's going to play out and then likely it's going to be Pajara there with with Kohli three and four We've got Ajinka Rahana, who's going to be likely number five, and you've got Barat in there as well. And then it's just going to be interesting what they decide to do with their all-rounder, whether that is Axar Patel. And then they've got, you know, they can play the, the three spinners, a couple of quicks there with Jadeja and also Ashwin to go along with Siraj and, you know, Moshami. They, they're probably the, that's the, probably the, the likely way they're going to go about it. So let's, uh, let's roll through just a couple of things of note here in, in this article that I saw is that our Boomer is obviously out injured, which isn't great. There's a few uh, fast bowlers out at the moment, obviously Boomer and then, uh, you know, Joffre Archer and a couple of other, and, and James Anderson as well, currently out, but should be back fairly soon. Uh, Joffre Archer, not so much, but with Boomer out, and expect, you know, Shami and Siraj, where they go the two pace attack or they go three, which I think they should go three in England. Very different conditions to that of when we played India, obviously recently, uh, when they beat us 2-1 in the four game series over there. So generally, what are, my, what are my thoughts on the, you know, the bowling outfit for India and how it will come up against us? I don't think the spinners will will be as good. Jadeja seems to have the wool over us, definitely. And Ashwin, like both of them together, just seem to dominate. Aksar Patel didn't have the success that he's had in uh, in India there, especially his bowling average is super low and, and he only got three wickets against the Australians. So I'm not sure how beneficial he is going to be over there in England, but his batting, I think, you know, the way he, the way he batted against Australia and India, we couldn't get him out. So I think that they should, should probably be selecting him as the all-rounder. Just, you know, obviously he his bowling is great. And I think he can do a good, decent job in England. He hasn't played over there yet in a test match, uh, but I think he can definitely do a good job with the bat at, at a minimum. So, um, yeah, so they're, the, the quicks there, Shami, I think, is their best bowler, pace bowler anyway. I think he's going to give us some fits. He He's going to be the one that I'm worried about. less uh, More than Siraj, Shami just hits that perfect line of length, and he's going to do a little bit over in England. And it'd be very interesting to see, actually, with the, the averages for the batsmen and also the bowlers aren't anything crash hot. So that's obviously against England in those games that they play. Uh, but yeah, that's that there. Uh, we'll get into that a little bit further in a sec. But Siraj, you know, he he sat out that um, that decider back in 2021, but he did, has taken 18 wickets against England in the five tests played in England across 21 and 22. So that's very important. Obviously, Yedav, I think, will be there. Either it's a third pacey or the backup guy. So yeah, Siraj, obviously... Um, yeah, one of the, the clearly their best bowler, and he picked up nine wickets um, in the series against Australia, which is important. So let's get rid of those two. Let's go straight into Rohit Sharma. So 
he has had a bit of a resurgence actually in his test, test career and has got the captaincy and, and he's been scoring incredibly well and he, and he plays so well in India, averaging 66.7. His average in, in England is pretty close to the best actually for the Indians here. So he's someone that in the form that he's in, I think is going to be someone that we need to worry about. Can obviously take the game away from you. Does score a lot faster in, in India than he does in England and also Australia. So that's something to note that if he's a little bit of a slower scorer, I don't, I don't think the Aussies are as scared of that type of player. We seem to, you know, obviously, Pajara, we found him very hard to get out in Australia in, in recent history. But, you know, last series, not as troubling to us. I think he kind of got there, got India in a little bit more of a rut, considering he's very slow. Uh, the type of player that is very expansive, very aggressive, uh, that can bat longer periods of time, that can be like that 60 to 70 kind of strike rate type of guy, is what we fear. So him having that lower strike rate in England is is very helpful I think, to you know, them not getting away and, and absolutely dominating. So Rohit there with the 42 average is very solid. Against Australia, though, he averaged, in Australia, he averages 31. So I'd expect somewhere probably in the middle, probably a 35, 36 um, yeah, type of average. So maybe a 50 and a 20 is kind of where I'm looking at. Uh, for Rohit, I think he's going to be very important for that side, though. There, let's go to Shubman Gill. And he obviously scored really well in Australia against us. And he's only played the four innings in England for an average of 14. So he'll, he'll come in with a few nerves. Won't be super confident, but the confidence against Australia, I think is going to be helpful there. So I think Shubman Gill is, is one of the, the make or break type of players. You know what you're going to get from Coley. And really, you know what you're going to get from Rohit Sharma. I think Shubman Gill over guys like Ajinka Rahane and Barat, I think I'd be worried about him more than I'd be worried uh, about Rahane or, or Barat. But yeah, that could that could change. Uh, there, he's more of the game-breaker type, type of player with a nice um, strike rate. But again, a much lower strike rate in England. Let's go to Pajara. And obviously, a, a delightful average across the board, but an average of 29.6 in England, and that's 30 innings there. So he scores his best in India at 52 average, 47 in Australia. Um, which you know definitely suits him the, the type of way he plays not super expansive he can stay in his shell and and uh, you know obviously a little bit more bounce so a bit more movement in England obviously with him just kind of playing down the line he's going to miss a lot but he'll also he'll also nick a few as well just with a little bit of movement enough to to get things going which you see in his eight innings in New Zealand which is similar to the conditions in England, he averages 20 as well, which is an ideal. So I think Pajara, not super worried about him. We know he can obviously score pretty well. He has three 300s and 550s against Australia, but he's someone I think we can we can get for that 30-odd average and not be a, a big worry for our side. The big one here, Virat Kohli, 33 average against England in 31 innings. So pretty crazy there. In Australia, he averages 54. So he'll take that positivity he has his best average in India and Australia, and not great elsewhere. 36 in New Zealand, so 36, 36 there, 33 in England. Both not ideal. I think you know if we can get him for about a 40 average or just below in this in this test, I think that uh, it'll go a long way to the Aussies winning. And what you're seeing here, guys, is when they when both teams, the Aussies and also the Indians, play in England there. Really not great averages across the board for all the batters, apart from Smithy and Manus. So I really think they're going to be the difference in this test match. If they can come out and score just on their average that they have over in England, then I really see a, a winning match for the Australians. And that's the way I'm going to tip it, um, is that, that Australia will win comfortable enough. If, if they're chasing, I expect them to win sort of four down. And uh, otherwise, you know, I think they'll, they'll win by sort of you know, 100 runs or so there that like the I think the Indians will fall short if they if they're the ones chasing. It won't be anything crazy. Obviously two of the you know, the two best teams coming together, but uh, I definitely see the the batting there as the, the biggest you know weakness for um for for the Indians just a little bit below us. And then I see our bowlers as better in those conditions over there, which we'll we'll show you in a second. They're very spin heavy, where our pace bowlers are some of the best in the world, which they don't have other than I think Shami and Siraj are great, but I don't believe they're up to Australian fast bowling stock standards. Okay, let's go to Rahane. And uh, 26 average for him over in England, 42 in Australia. Again, solid. Um, a nice 98 in his game in, in Bangladesh. New Zealand has the similarity, 36 there. So again, somewhere around that 30 mark. I just don't think it's going to be enough if he does get that start. If he doesn't, then you know, it's, it's a guy that with less experience coming in, like a Barat. Obviously, uh, 20 is his average in six innings, so he, he's going to come out and do a lot better. He has seven catches and the stumping, so he will be the keeper in this side, and he definitely needs to step up. I don't think it'll happen in this match, um, you know, given it's his first get first test match in England, but yeah, definitely 
could potentially happen. Let's go to a couple of bowlers now. So Shami here, his bowling career stats in India are terrific. 22 for a, for a very spin friendly deck. He, he gives the Australians fits there. He, he averages 32 in Australia. So not as good, but you look at his England record and that's 40 as well. So I still think that in England though, he, I, I, I see him as giving us a little bit more more trouble closer to the average that he has when he plays in India. He seems to get to move around a little bit, a little bit, just enough swing, enough, mo enough movement off the wicket in India that I think he can do the same in England against Australians who are less, sorry, used to those type of conditions less than obviously the team they're playing in England. So I I'd expect probably about a 30 average in this one and, and for him to have a, a good innings. One of the, one of the two innings that, that we bat in, I expect him to, to have a three or four far in one of those. So just, just watch out for Shami in that one. And Siraj obviously has a bunch more wickets across the board here in England, average of 33, 29 Australia, 24 in India, a very, very good bowler at that. Um, yeah, overall 47 test wickets, nothing crazy, but he definitely has an opportunity to, you know, build on that record and do good things. But I see Shami is doing better than Siraj. Again, he has the ability to, to go off. He has a fire for in Australia, so he could definitely do that in England. But yeah, definitely not someone I'm super worried about, but yeah, it remains to be seen. Ravi Ashwin in this one. So yeah, his, his record in England is very good. So it's better than what Lions is. And Ashwin, I think, is the guy we need to worry about more than Jadeja in England. Ashwin always goes good against Australia, obviously in India. He averages you know, about that 20 against Australia as well. Um, yeah, you see here, Jadeja does better in Australia. And I think that's very different conditions to, to that, um, you know, of how Ashwin spins the ball. It's very interesting, isn't it? Because Jadeja is more around, you know, trying to hit the stumps there. Um, and Ashwin's a bit more of a turner of the, of the ball, which I think you'll be able to get a little bit more in England is what I was getting at. Jadeja is looking at more bolds and LBWs and... Yeah, he can do that really well. Obviously in India with some that, that grip and then some that will just go straight on where Ashwin's more turn and bounce, getting you know off gloves and stuff like that, uh, which I think is going to happen a little bit more in England and is why I have him as a slight more, a, a little bit more of a worry than that of Jadeja. But they're batting, both of them, uh, okay in, in England. So 23 is the average for Ashwin in England, very much the same in Australia at 24. And then the average for uh, Jadeja in England is 29.7. So a little bit down from India and Australia. So again, but you know, scores are going to be a little bit lower than that uh, in, in Australia as well. So something to note there for, for those two boys that they should be able to score pretty well, uh, bat and ball, and uh, probably have a little bit less you know, involvement than they do in than they, than they do in India and probably about similar or slightly less than they do in Australia for Jadeja. Um, and probably a little bit more value I see in Ashwin coming into this test match. So he's the one to worry about, obviously spinning the ball away from the left-handers that we have in there, bowling around the wicket, get the odd one to skid through, I think, Ashwin, and get the odd LBW, and then get some to turn away and get some bounce, you know, similar to that of um, yeah, what Nathan Lyon does there. And the last one, Axel Patel. Uh, yeah, the bowling, great in India, 15.98, a couple of games in Bangladesh as well. Uh, obviously, you know, that average was a lot lower before it you know, came to Australia, but the batting is up high with the 15 innings for a 42. So I really, I can really see them using him, but I can also see them, you know, leaving him out. But, you know, how many other options do they clearly have as an all-rounder? There's not a lot that I know of. And if, if you're an, an Indian fan, guys, and a big welcome to all of you guys that are watching this video, uh, you know, I'll be making these videos, these reactions each uh, and every, after each and every day. So I can't wait to react to that. But this is just the uh, the general overview of how I think the match will turn out. Aussies for the win, just. Uh, but it's going to be a great matchup and a great spectacle for cricket. Uh, and then, you know, be within a week after this test is finished and we'll be straight into all the Ashes content. Let me know your thoughts on this game, how you think it'll play out, some of the, the players that you think will, will stand out. I definitely think Manus... And Smitty will be able to to get a really good footing into their their first you know first Test match in England and and get things set up. And I really think one of either Travis Head, uh, Kawaja, and I actually think you know Warren is a half a chance of, of coming out and and really making a name for himself. They actually just announced uh, he actually just announced a couple of days ago that he's looking to retire at you know the end of that 
was the last game in January, so ended the um, the series against Pakistan, uh, and won't play against West Indies. That's if he doesn't get dropped. So he can feel it personally. Uh, you can tell he's feeling the pressure, and he knows that he has to perform in this match or the next couple for him to to come out and uh, you know be picked for each each of the the Ashes Test matches. Um, so yeah, really, so he's either going to completely falter or he's going to come out and dominate. And I think yeah, you, you back a champion. You know, obviously one of the our best players for a long time. You you back them in before you yeah, you rub them out. I, I think you know before you before you count them out. I should say there. So um yeah, I wish all Australians and Indians all the best of luck in this one, and I can't wait to watch it.